Welcome to C++ for Java Programmers. I'm Professor Califf. In this video, I want to talk about writing classes that manage dynamic memory correctly in C++. We know that we have two fundamental dangers when it comes to dynamically allocated memory. Memory leaks and dangling pointers. When our objects use dynamically allocated memory, we have to write three special methods to guarantee that the memory is cleaned up appropriately. A destructor, a copy constructor, and an assignment operator. C++ actually provides us with default versions of these that work well when we don't have dynamically allocated memory to manage. But the default versions will not meet our needs when we use dynamic allocation. Note that I am assuming that we are not using the move constructor or the move assignment operator, since those are quite rare and beyond the scope of this video. Let's talk first about why we need the destructor. This is a method that is automatically called when our object is destroyed, either because it was dynamically allocated and someone's called delete on this object, or because it's gone out of scope when it's a local variable. If we don't write the destructor, the default destructor does nothing. Suppose that we have an object with a dynamically allocated data member. When the object is destroyed, if we're using the default destructor, nothing happens to the dynamically allocated data, and we have a memory leak. The destructor is named for the class, just like a constructor, except that we put a tilde in front of the class name. It never has any parameters, which should make sense since we will never call this method. It's called automatically, so there's no way to provide an argument. All that the destructor will do is to delete any dynamically allocated memory that this object controls. In this example, I'm assuming that the dynamically allocated data is a single item. If it were an array, we would use the array form of delete. If it were something more complex, like a linked list or a tree, we would have to write the appropriate code to delete all of the nodes in the list or tree. With a correctly written destructor, when the object is deleted, the destructor will be called and first delete the dynamically allocated memory, and then the object itself will actually be deleted. Next, we have the copy constructor. This is called whenever we create one of our objects based on another object. This might happen because we've passed the object as a parameter, as in this example, or we've called the copy constructor explicitly, or we've initialized the object at object declaration. This would be an example where the copy constructor is called because my object has just been created and the assignment is an initialization. Let's see what happens if we use the default copy constructor with a good destructor. Note that if we have the default constructor, these problems won't happen. We'll just have the memory leak from lacking a correct destructor. So here we have the same situation as before, but now we're going to use the copy constructor to make a copy of our object. The default copy constructor will just copy the object byte by byte, including the value of the pointer. So we have a shallow copy with both objects using the same dynamically allocated memory. The problem will come in when we delete one of the objects. Note that it doesn't really matter which one we delete. The destructor will correctly delete the dynamically allocated memory and we'll have a dangling pointer. So uses of that pointer will be problematic, potentially leading to a variety of issues. And when we do eventually delete the other object, we'll attempt to free the same memory a second time, which will typically result in a program crash. So what does a correct copy constructor look like? It is a constructor with a parameter that is a constant reference object of the same class type. The parameter is often called a ridge for original. In the method, we need to copy any static data members. Since nothing is going to do that for us, this is the only constructor getting called. Then we need to allocate the dynamically allocated data and copy the values from the original object into this one. When it comes to actually copying the data, don't just copy the assignment statement I showed you. That will work just fine if you have a single object, but will not work for anything more complex. What is involved is going to depend on what the data is. If you have an array, 
you'll need to run a for loop or use a library function. If you have a linked list or tree, you're going to have to allocate a node for the new object corresponding to each node in the original object and copy the data over for each node. Our third needed method is the assignment operator. This is what we'll use if we assign one object to another object. In this case, both objects already exist. So here we have a much more complex situation. In the object we're copying to, we already have some dynamic memory allocated. So we need to clean that up. And then we still need to allocate the right amount of dynamic memory and copy everything over. The assignment operator then needs to do three things. It deletes the memory it currently controls, just like the destructor. Then it allocates new memory and copies everything over, just like the copy constructor. Then it has to return star this, because the assignment operator always returns the value that was assigned. There is one problem we can run into. Sometimes an object ends up getting assigned to itself. This is not a common occurrence, but you would probably be surprised at how often it does happen. And when it does, if we do the delete, we now have big problems. We're trying to work with data that no longer exists for either object. So we need to guard against it. Before we actually look at the assignment operator structure, let's talk about being smart. We should not call the destructor. We should not call the copy constructor. But we also should not duplicate code. Code duplication leads to all sorts of problems with bug fixing and maintenance, not to mention extra work. And we know that the assignment operator needs to duplicate the work of the destructor and copy constructor. Our solution will be private helper methods. So what do I mean by that? We will create a private copy method, which will contain exactly the code we need in the copy constructor. Then the copy constructor will consist of just a call to that method. We will also create a private method that we might call clear or destroy which will contain exactly the code we need in the destructor. And our destructor will consist of just a call to that method. Once we have that, we can easily construct our assignment operator. So the assignment operator, as I said, returns the value that was assigned. So we're going to be returning a reference to one of our objects. Then we have the operator itself. So our operators are always called operator followed by the symbol that is the operator. Then our parameter is a constant reference to one of our objects, typically called RHS for right hand side. Then in the function itself, we're first going to check on that self assignment problem. Before we do anything else, we want to make sure that this is not the same as the address of the right hand side. If it is, we don't have to do anything because these two are both pointing at the same object. And so all we need to do is return star this and we're done. If it's not self-assignment, then we're going to call our helper method for the clear or destroy, whatever we're calling our method for cleaning up our memory. And then we're going to call the copy passing in that object that was the parameter for the right hand side. And finally, of course, return star this in either case. So let's review the special methods we need to have for a class with dynamically allocated memory. We need a destructor that frees all dynamically allocated memory the object controls. We need a copy constructor that allocates the dynamic memory and copies all data. And then we need our assignment operator that does both, unless we have self-assignment. Do be aware that this isn't everything. There will probably be logic specific to our class where we need to take our dynamic memory management into account. If we have a dynamic array that needs to grow, we will need to allocate the new bigger array, copy everything over, and delete the old array before copying the pointer to the new array into our instance variable. If we remove a node from a linked list or a tree, we need to delete that node before losing track of it. We still need to understand the fundamentals of managing our dynamic memory properly and apply those to our particular circumstance. What I've covered here is just the boilerplate methods that we will always need. And of course, our copy and delete methods will have code specific to the dynamic memory use of our objects. One last note, 
I know some of you are questioning the necessity of deleting and reallocating memory in the assignment operator. And you're right. There are occasions when we can use the memory we've already allocated and only do the actual copying, no deletion and allocation. Avoiding the deletion and allocation is a time saver. But those circumstances depend on already having sufficient memory allocated. Ensuring that can lead to more complex code. And you'll still have to do the deletion and allocation if you don't have what you need. So you may end up duplicating quite a bit of code in a way that is less easy to avoid. The approach I've presented here won't always be the best option, but it will always work. So I recommend using it until you become quite comfortable with C++ and with the underlying concepts. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this series useful for getting up to speed in C++. At some point, I'll add something on inheritance and polymorphism, but that's probably a few months down the road. Please feel free to suggest other desired topics.